Hey there guys, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 survival horror game series and in today's video we are going to be continuing on with the game and we are going to be creating a really cool looking jump scare. So having said that we're going to be having a zombie pop up out right in front of the player when the player goes through the doors to the survival mansion. Now there's loads of different aspects that we're going to be covering for this so we're going to be going over importing the audio to you know scare you know scare the pants off of the player, we're going to be going over setting up the animation going up going over the script to sort of tie it all together and get him popping out at the right time the volumes and so on so there's plenty to go over let's just go ahead and dive in and get started Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. And the first thing that I want to do then is I actually want to import the image that I'm going to be working with for the zombies. So we're not going to be actually be using a real zombie for the jump scare. Instead, we're going to have like sort of like a box with a zombie image on it and it should look quite nice and matched, you know, matched with a uh, you know, with a sound effect and everything, it's going to look quite nice. So I'm going to quickly try and show you exactly which zombie we're going to use, and you're going to see exactly how this is going to look out. So I'm just going to go into my assets folder here, and pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this zombie pop up out right in front of the character as soon as they end their game. Now, it's going to be quite scary. It's going to look quite cool. Match with the sound effect. Like I said, it's going to look really, really awesome. So the first thing that I'm going to do then is in your project folder, go ahead and find the zombie and just go to your te textures folder and import it straight in there. Once we've done that, we can actually bring it into the level ready to create the, the jump scare. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to create a basic piece of, you know, a basic little cube here. And I'm just going to drag it into the scene. Just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and chuck the zombie texture on there just like that. Now it should create a little material for you as well when you do that with just the texture. Just if you don't get anything popping up, uh, you know, you don't see the zombie on there, just go ahead and open up your material and make sure it looks all good, which it should, which is just like this. And just go ahead and hook up you and change the material and blend mode to translucent or transparent just see which one works so this one's not working for me so i think the one is you you're looking for is maybe masks hook this up to opacity mask so the alpha channel should cover the information to crop out the edges which it's doing just there that is great so i'm going to go ahead and apply that and i'm going to make sure i save the asset as well just in case the engine crashes we don't want any issues we don't want anything to break so i'm going to go ahead and save that and let's take a look at the zombie in our scene now so you can see we've got our zombie here ready to go ready to pop out the ground i'm going to go ahead and adjust him because at the moment it's a box with sort of four sides on it now you know it doesn't necessarily look as realistic as we'd like it to but I mean this is sort of going to be the end of the game to sort of scare the player uh, we don't need too much detail the player is going to be directly in front of it and they're not going to be able to move at the same time so it's like we don't necessarily need to have a zombie model we can sort of just have this pop up so adjust this box so it's sort of flat like this so they can't actually see you know the other side of the zombie or the edges or anything and that looks good to me now make sure that you go ahead and scale this up so it's nice and big you're making sure that you're going to capture the player's attention and just absolutely scare them you know just like that so the way this jump scare is going to work is basically as soon as the player opens this door i want this zombie to pop out of the ground play the sound effect and look really cool so i'm going to pretty much just chuck it behind my door here just like that nice and big so it pops up right in front of the in front of the player and by default I don't necessarily want this zombie to be shown in the game so I'm going to go ahead and move it down under the ground and we're going to use a matinee sequence to sort of bring it above the ground and play the sound effect exactly when we want it to. So having said that we are going to go ahead and create the matinee so just click uh, cinematics up here sorry one second and press add matinee and then boom. From here we should have our matinee editor open up and with your little zombie selector just go ahead and right click and type in add empty group call this zombie for now and right click on there and add a movement track and pretty much what we want to do is we want this to pop up inside of the player's view after a couple of seconds so it's not really working here properly it's not got the thing selected and it's not letting me make a keyframe so all you got to do if you get the same thing is just go ahead and delete the group 
and create the group again, making sure you've got the zombie selected and add a new empty group, call it whatever you like. And you can see this time it's working, you can see it's changing the mobility to movable, so we can actually move this and sequencer and code and stuff like that. And just call it, call it zombie again. And once again, right click and add a movement track, just like that. Cool. And what we're going to be doing is over half a second, we just want it to be moving up and just like that. So just press enter to create the first keyframe if you haven't got one. Press enter again to make the second one. Click and drag it with the control button held down and just move it to the point that you want it to be. For me, that's going to be half a second. Click that and you can see in the bottom left hand corner of our viewport, it says adjust key movement. From here, just go ahead and move the zombie up just like that right in front of the player. So as soon as the you know the player opens that door so let's just go ahead and press stop and play just to make sure this comes out nice and quick now I think that's a bit too slow for a jump scare for me to be honest so I'm just gonna go ahead and move this keyframe back a little bit to something like 0.3 seconds and hopefully it should sort of pop out a little bit faster there and that is looking great so the next thing that I want to do then is I actually want to add a sound effect into here just to make you know the jump scare that much more immersive that much more scary and I've actually recorded one which is in the project files once again Again, it's not that great, you know, you guys can take something from the internet, do what you like, record your own, um, but for now I've just got this little one, so it's just pretty much me going, I hope that scared you. It's not that great, so, you know, it's just me going, Rah, I hope that scared you. You know, you, like I said, you can do whatever you like with this, really. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and import it into my textures folder for now. Now, you could go ahead and make an audio folder if that's something that you do want to do, but for now, I'm just going to chuck it in there, just like that. And from here, I am just going to go ahead and close that. And now we're going to be playing the sound through blueprints to sort of get it in time with when it all adds up. So what I want to do now is I want to go into my level blueprint and I want to pretty much add this matinee onto the end sequence of the sort of door opening key sort of system that we've got. Now, if you don't necessarily want to do it with the door, you can just sort of use a trigger box instead, similar to how I've got the door and you just set up the you know the matinee like I have done now but anyway so let's just go ahead and open up your level blueprint give that a second to load up and once that's done we are pretty much just going to find the door blueprint system so let's see if we can find that no it's not there da -da 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 -da. okay so can I find it okay that's not it number of wood no that's not it and I think this might be it. So this is sort of where the player opens the door, I believe. So what have we got? Um, hello has key. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, no, no. So we just got to make sure we go ahead and find this. So one thing we can do to actually find this is just go through it one by one just do it in sort of logical order if you can or what you could do is you could see sort of which trigger volume is which one so you can see we've got trigger volume normal and trigger volume 2 here click the trigger volume on here and you can see it's trigger volume 2 so it is going to be on this path so it's sort of going to be on the end here so what we've got here is cast a third person character it's checking to see whether or not the player has the key and then if it's true it's sort of going out to the end here so what I want to do then is I pretty much want to tell it to play matinee from here so the way we're going to do that is we've got to make sure we've got the matinee selected the new one that we just created I'm going to make sure I've got the new, the you know, the right matinee actor as well. So just go ahead and open it up if you can and just double check it's the right one. And I can see that is all good. Go back into your level blueprints and let's just type it, right click and type in play. And then if we scroll up, it should say cinematic and then play. Chuck that in there and then from the end of both of these save game things, just go ahead and turn that on just like that. Now, if you don't have a save game system in place, just hook it up to the last bit of script that you have for opening the door really and then you can sort of work from there. You can see we, we've done pretty much exactly the same thing with the door opening sequence here. So where we've got print string and then play, that's just hooked, hooked up to our conditioning. If you don't have the save game stuff, just hook it up directly to here. So hopefully this zombie should actually pop up now when we open the door. So I'm going to do one last thing, which is, you know, tell it to play a sound. 
and we're going to use play sound 2d for now and the reason why we're doing that is it's you know we don't necessarily need to play it in a specific location we are pretty much just going to play it right where the player is because you know they're only possibly going to be in this area anyway so it's just fine um, and the sound that we're going to work with is going to be the one for that we just imported in so that's going to be jump scare so just go ahead and chuck that in there just use the little arrow to select that and hopefully it should be all good so I'm going to go ahead and compile this and I'm going to close it and let's just go ahead and test it. Now once again we're going to play through our game, just go ahead and collect all three pieces of wood, just progress through the level really. Uh, so this is another one, another piece of wood over here, another piece of wood over here. There you are, that's all good, so we've completed that objective. Let's get some food because it looks like we're about to die. And I'm going to go light the fire and then I'm just going to go and grab the key and open the doors really so let's just go ahead and do that so take the key and now let's unlock the door and see if we've got our jump scare so run all the way over to it uh you know what i'm actually gonna grab some food before i die no i just don't want to die and have to do all this again so i'm gonna take this food just like that and let's go ahead and unlock that door and see if we have a scary jump uh, a scary jump scare scary zombie so let's open it up <sighs> I hope that scared you. There you are. So we've got our lovely little zombie here. <sighs> that is absolutely that great. You. And you know, it is, you know, it's brilliant really. That is great. So one thing that I do need to do so we don't have a zombie popping up more than once is we pretty much just need to uh, go into our level blueprint and we need to set up some conditioning to check to see whether or not it's already been run. So having said that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a branch node just over here, add it in between these bits here, and where we've got play, I'm just going to hook that up to uh, false. And over here, I'm going to create a new variable, and this variable is just going to be called uh, jump completed. So this is pretty much a variable that's going to tell the engine whether or not the jump scare has already been played once. And I'm going to set this to false by default. The way you can check your default value is just over here, just make sure it's unticked. And after playing it, you know, it's going to set this jump completed to true. And that will only play the little jump scare once now. So hopefully once we compile this and we play it again, we should have a nice looking little jump scare system in place. So let's go ahead and play the game again, test it one more time, go ahead and, you know, just collect the key. I think we can skip the wood for now and just unlock it. So let's run all the way over here. And it's still giving me the instructions because, you know, we're just so good at our own game and everything. And there you are. So, for whatever reason, the jump scare didn't seem to work there. So, let's just go ahead and see if we can find out exactly why. So, I'm going to open up my level blueprint again. And all we're doing is a check to see... And there you are. I think that's the issue. You can see we haven't got our condition in here. So we just need to pretty much drag that out, get the reference and chuck it in there. It's a silly little mistake and little things like that can break your whole script. So, you know, that's, you know, that's something you can do. Now, you guys don't necessarily have to do the check to see whether or not you want to have it run more than once. It's definitely something that's worth considering because it's, you know, you don't necessarily want to jump up zombie jumping out and out and out over and over again so let's go ahead and try it again <sighs> i hope that scared you so there you are we've got our lovely little zombie there and it worked great and it popped out so that is pretty much everything for this video hopefully you guys have a better understanding of how you can create a jump scare now you don't necessarily have to limit yourself to just a 2d zombie you can use you know character models for zombies you can use ghosts you can do anything you like really guys so just sort of put your own little creative twist on there and you know as always just keep on creating so thanks for watching guys make sure you share the video smack that like button and i will see you next time goodbye